Good afternoon. This is Hella Crafters Rehabs, and it's a beautiful af spring afternoon here in North Carolina. And here are the mowers going, and my ultrasonic cleaner going. Um, so the next thing we're going to tackle is the antenna uh, coils. Let's see if you can guess which one is which. Well, by this is the this is two coils on one form. This is the broadcast or AM band. This is band two, which is 1.724. This is band three, and that's band four. So that's what we'll be installing. We're not going to go through like we did the last time because I want to do some other things in this video. Um, so that first coil I showed you was L3 and there's, it, these switches are very simple. I've turned it around so it might be a little bit easier to see what's going on in there. Um, this is simply connecting the antenna to band 1, 2, 3, or 4 right here on this front side of the switch and on the back side of the switch is connecting the output or the antenna rotors I guess of the third gang in the, in the uh, main tuning gang to either one, two, three or four and grounding the others. Very straightforward, very uh, simple if there's any typos or something like that, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about it. Uh, the one thing I don't do is I don't put this 1,000 ohm resistor in here, which is nothing but an attenuation of the signal, and we don't need it. So I bypass it with a, um, with a jumper. So I'll get started on that. And I'll come back. Okay, I've removed uh, the band one and two and cleaned them. And now we're going to test it. That's 26 microhenries. And that's band one, 1.9 ohms. This is L3. Okay, and then we'll do D to C. C6.1 ohms. Guess what? I got it backwards again. 6.0 ohms. Forty-five microhenries. So C and D is band one, and A and B is band two. Okay. So we will we'll coat this with dope and mount it up, and then we'll come back. Okay, I've removed uh, the band one and two and cleaned them and now we're going to test it as 26 microhenries and that's band one 1.9 ohms so I'm going to go ahead and write that down this is L3 Do D to C. I see 6.1 ohms. Guess what? I got it backwards again. 6.0 ohms. And 145 microhenries. So C and D 
is band one. And A and B is band two. Okay. So we will we'll coat this with dope and mount it up and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've um, installed the band one and two antenna coil and the pointer. This is ba this actually A and B are band one. They're not band two, so apparently there's more. Um, inductance in band two. Anyway, A and B goes to band one and that's the one where this this uh, resistor was bypassed with a jumper. What confused me was this intersection here is is not an intersection it, it, and so you want to read a thousand ohms to pin two but it's not. It's a th It goes to pin one. So 2 goes all the way to D right here. Two, uh, 2 goes to D. 1 goes to B. So uh, that's installed. And I did put a little piece of shrink wrap over this one because it's so close to the, um, to the live part of the antenna. Uh, connector, the PL259, actually it's an SO259, socket 259, and uh, I didn't want, it's, it doesn't in interfere, but it's really close. So, now we'll proceed on to uh, band 3. Okay, so let's, um, Go ahead and test these uh, bands three and four. Here's band three. You measure from A to B. And to turn it on, you can't see it. Very hard to see. Turn it that way. Okay. So I see uh, resistance of 0.3. Lost my card that I was writing on. So this is L2. Just to record it, 3.3 million Henry's. And then we'll go to C and D. Okay. We have 1.9 million Henry's. Point five ohms. And we'll go to band four without tearing everything up. A and B. Point two million Henry. This is L one. This is L one. So A and B are 0.2 ohms. Point 0.8 million. It's just 
four twists around the form. Very, that's the nature of high frequency, but then the pickup, the, the secondary. I'm sorry, the primary. You actually get some amplification on these coils a little bit, a few dB. Uh, 1.1 milliamperes, CD, 1.1 milliamperes. Not a whole lot. 0.4 ohms. So, we made our measurements, and we'll go through hooking them up. I'll go back. I can get this unconnected. If you say please, it works. I rarely ever say please to electronics. I should do it more often. Okay, so I have finished installing bands three and four. The ground comes to this point and to this point, and then there's a lead that goes to the stator in the antenna section and I put it inside a shrink wrap. Um, this is your A1 goes into the switch your A2 uh, connects both to this coil and this coil then you have band 1, band 2, band 3 and band 4 on this side of the switch and then you have um, for the, there is a primary uh, on this uh, there is a primary connection for these two coils and it connects to the switch this is position one and that's position actually it's position It's position three and four on this switch, three and four. I'm sorry, on the bottom side, three and four. So, at any rate, we can test it. This is, uh, you'll see it's, con you've got 23 ohms of resistance. That's in band four, which is the tiny amount of resistance here, plus the 22 ohm, which is right there. And feeds into the RF amplifier. This is band two, band three, and band four. So everything's working. And uh, I'm gonna, this is probably, I'm gonna probably do some more tomorrow on this same video. See you tomorrow. It's really nice outside. Okay, so now we're at the point of putting controls into the front. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the sensitivity control. Basically, it sits Basically, it comes off the standby receive switch. And there's a lot cable that goes all the way to here, and then the switch completes the circuit and then goes back to actually it's from here to here, and then it goes back to here. So there's actually two leads that go to the switch, and one of them comes directly from the sensitivity right here. And it's got uh, an open one of the terminals on it is on the pod is open, the center terminal comes is ground and the other terminal goes to the receiver. And there I go. Pick up the paper and this. So what we have is this goes to the sensitive the standby receive switch 
And this actually was connected here originally. This goes to the capacitor, and the capacitor goes to ground. And we're going to reinforce the ground a little bit here. Here is the switch part is for the AVC, and that's in a different part of the schematic. That is over here, which simply takes AVC and goes to ground through a 150 ohm res uh, resistor. So we're going to clean this up. I've put, installed a terminal strip. The way this is set up is you've got just this wad down here and it just you can't get it into it. You can't get to the take this out if you have to. You can't it's, you have to take the face off to do anything over here. We're changing that. So let me get this cleaned up and then we'll take the, take it to the next step. While my desoldering tool is warming up, this uh, resistor on the AVC switch is in good shape. 159, I think I'm going to leave that. Um, and we can test, go ahead and test this and make sure the switch is operational. So. Right now there is no connection, and then when you, actually, when you open the switch, is it opening the switch? Yeah. Huh. When you connect it to ground, there's no AVC. All right. That seems odd. I have to think about that anyway. Anyway, we're seeing 159, 161. All right. Now let's see how well the pot is working. So we'll connect to here, which is all right. So it's showing 0.78. Five hundred four K So it's ten point I think it's a ten K and we're at ten point eight two and see it looks really smooth. You know, you're looking at a digital thing here. I tell you what, let's look at an analog and see how smooth it is. Well, so much for this. It needs to replace the battery, so it's a C battery, so we'll have to do that later. Okay, so anyway, 10.8. But it's, I don't see any real dead spots. Now down in the low ohms area. And it gets out of range. So there we are. Okay. So it seems to be working. We're going to clean it anyway. And we can do that. I prefer this to uh, the other stuff. So it has a nice smell to it, too. <coughs> Probably should have wear gloves. Gloves are at a premium right now. So we'll pass on that. It's very volatile so it comes off quickly. 
Does a nice cleaning job. Super HFE electronics cleaner. Nettoyant pour électronique. électronique. My butchered French. Something falls no matter what I do. There it is. Deoxit, right. I don't like what deoxit does to these phenol insulators and switches and things like that. And since it's working and we don't need to get inside much as I'd like to. Okay, we'll clean this up, come back. I mean, electronic wise. Okay, let me show you what I've done here. I've got a white lead, which is what it is in the set, which goes to the standby receive switch from this position, from this part of the switch. This soldering connection's cleaned up, got the 150 ohm here. And then a black lead is the other end, which goes to the AVC. And I'll go right in here. And we'll put this in the front here. Can't see it. All right. Let's try this. Can't see it even anyway because of the angle of the camera. But anyway, I'm just putting a nut over the... Uh, sensitivity pot in its place. Just hand tightened right now. So this will go to the AVC. I went ahead and soldered that so you can see where things are. And this is out of the way. That's out of the way. That will go through this grommet over here and there'll be a lead that comes back in from the standby sw receive switch and this is the capacitor which is over here still the lip of that will be over it but it's not it's more accessible than it would be otherwise I think at any rate you can see what's going on instead of it buried, being buried under the, the face of the receiver and then we have to solder this end of it to ground. That's the foil side, which I used a... I'm just using an oscilloscope for that purpose. It's just easier. Let's bring this around a little bit. And move that away a bit. Can solder. Without burning the capacitor, please. Yeah, that's right. Nice and silvery. Okie doke. So. Just to prove that the, once again that the tiny chiefs are useless, here we are with a, this is what was replaced. These things just don't like to contact. 2.267, right. I bet it's not 0.267. I bet it's 0.22. Set this on normal P, poly, whatever. And put it on the leakage tester. 
and uh, maybe in a year or two it might uh, charge up mostly somewhat perhaps but basically it's a nice resistor in fact let's find out what the resistance is <laughs> it's not supposed to have resistance right it's called a capacitor so we'll run this down to oh 2k let's see what it comes out I don't have the curve tracer built yet. Okay, it's not, it's showing open, but it's got plenty of, it just, that's just because the, there's not enough current in a ohm meter to cause a capacitor to show its real color. So, another useless tiny chief in the trash. All right. Well, that's enough damage for this evening. We'll do the function switch, which goes right here tomorrow. Okay, our next step is the selectivity switch. It's a simple, straightforward switch that switches in and out the, uh, the normal, broad, and sharp selectivity. I see we got a broken capacitor right here we'll have to replace. There's a shielded uh, cable that goes to the IEP, the T1. Uh, here's the crystal. We'll be measuring that outside of circuit. Needs a little bit of cleanup here. I see um, there's a 10 picofarad ceramic capacitor which has a tendency, this, this whole thing has a tendency to short here because this gets loose so we'll be working on that. And so we need to get all this cleaned up and then we'll mount it inside the receiver and document it. Okay, so I've finished my reconditioning of the parts here. This is the uh, crystal phasing control. I don't know why I can't say words quickly. And this, um, I don't think that's going to be all right. I'm not too happy with that solder connection. All right, we'll come back. Okay, so I've finished with my reconditioning of the crystal phasing in the crystal uh, terminal strip. This was really difficult to get a some insulation around this to keep it from running into the side of this and also to keep the continuity and to so what it is, it was after I got the solder in there, I put a little bit of Corona dope on the outside, coil dope, and that should help with the insulation. So, we'll just do a quick test of this. There should be continuity where it's supposed to be and not where it's not supposed to be. So the first thing we'll do is we'll check the stator against the rotor. All right. And of course it's all twisted up into a knot so I can't do anything. All right. So stator and rotor are not connected. This is both stator. All right. So, secondly, we want to make sure that this, which will go to the T1, is continuous back to here. It's a real, okay. And I don't think I can get it in there, but I think it's going to be all right. Get in there. 
Okay, this should be continuous with this, yes, and with this. No, the other side. All right, so that one checks out. Okay, and so the crystal I'm using is 457.501, the one I had in spare. So I'm doing a test of the crystal to find its frequency. And it's as simple as putting it on a spectrum analyzer and varying the signal generator until the maximum peak shows up on the um, this spectrum analyzer. And it's reading 459.68 kilohertz. So that's the frequency of the crystal. Kind of high, actually, but uh, that is, it is what it is. I'm, I'm looking now at a spare. And this one is 457, 457.501. Simply just varying the signal generator till you get the maximum output. And uh, rather than the one that came out of the set, which was two kilohertz higher. So. This will be the one we put in. It has its own terminal strip, but this thing, they didn't bother to bend this back, and so there was, you know, this was touching that and things like that. So, got that fixed, and we'll put this, reassemble all this, and then we'll see the final product. So, this assembles just like this. put in some of that uh, bow shield T9 on this shield. That makes it it's real, it cleaned up real good in the ultrasonic cleaner. And guess what? I have to do it uh, differently. I got the steps here. It's got to hang on to the bracket. That's why you show these things on YouTube so that you, other people can make the mistakes instead of you. So That's much better. And fishing around and finding that screw is a whole lot more fun now that we have a bracket in the middle. Yeah. 
He wants to catch. And he wants to fight too. Okay. Should be on the line of these now. Wonder how long the assembly person took to put this together in the assembly line. My job is to only be proficient, not efficient. My dad ran a factory. He could do every job proficiently, but he couldn't do it efficiently. And because he could do the job, he knew what it entailed and what the challenges were. There we go. It's not working. It's not anywhere close. So we have to move this around, hold it tight, and try again. We were screwing air. <laughs> I've never done that before, huh? That's in there. You can see it get tighter. Now, when this goes over to the switch, there'll be no danger of um, shorting. And there's a, a new shielded wire that can go to the T1. This 10 picofarad capacitor was the replacement for the one that was in here. This one leaked profusely. These ceramic capacitors, you know, ten of them, nine will be good, one will be bad, and there's no way of knowing it until you take it out of circuit and figure it out. So, we had to replace it. Okay. So, I'm just going to this is it. But do the hardware mounting here for you and then spare you all the soldering and then we'll review exactly what took place here. What I put it in correctly. <laughs> I was gonna say I put it in backwards. No, I didn't put it in backwards. I put it in right, I think. Is it supposed to be back here? Let me check. We have to do that again. Albert. Hello, Albert. Let's see. Act first, think second, and plan third. Goes around that way. I'm going to spare you. Okay, I'm back. I would say that I am barely proficient at this part of the assembly line. If I did two radios like this, I would be uh, go back to floor sweeping at the Helicrafters factory instead of actually doing something. Now, it's funny how it goes in a whole lot quicker and better the right way. Don't ask me why. Okay, so we'll put this. And it was pretty obvious because we had... Um, the clearance was just kind of messed up. The knob was sticking way too far through the 
through the face on a, <laughs> a really prominent crystal phasing control in the center of your eye at all times <laughs> if you put the receiver that, together that way. Okay. Yeah. Come on, find the slot. And I gotta go find the switch. Because that's the next thing that we deal with. I'll be right back. Okay, it's a little complicated, but here goes. On the switch, this last position goes through the 10 picofarad capacitor to this um, uh, crystal phasing control. And uh, you see that I've got that well insulated. This green wire goes to this end of the uh, crystal and trimmer uh, combination. The center position between the crystal and trimmer combination comes to this position. This position is shielded and goes to T1 and this position goes into the um, crystal phasing control. So still was a lot more compli complicated than it, even the explanation. I've mounted this uh, terminal right here where, where it was before and um, with the new crystal that's a 2 kilohertz lower than the other one. So we'll see how that works with the, that, that tube there. I think we'll be all right. And uh, it'll be time for after this the volume control here and these are two switches that have to go in one is uh, BFO and um, normal, and the other one is noise limiter. Then over here is the on-off switch. And that, with that, I'll conclude. Thanks for watching. This is Cal Hall Albert at Hallicrafters Rehabs. Hope you're getting along well. And remember, men aware. Man, uh, uh, I'm sorry, mouth, eyes, and nose. Bye-bye. God bless.